what is up guys and welcome back to another video and welcome back to this build guide as this is a video dedicated to creating your own PC and it features the latest KV Lake processor, the i7-7700K and this is pretty much the price performance chip if you need serious horsepower from your PC as if you spend less you may struggle in certain tasks and if you spend more, well you start to get diminishing returns despite the increased performance but buying a PC is all about buying the appropriate PC for what you're going to do with it. So this will show you everything you need to create your own KB Lake system and show you why it's so good for editing. So in order to take you through the build guide, we're gonna start by taking a look at the components. And it all starts here with the case, which is the Bit Phoenix Aurora, which is a fantastic case. I've been building in it over the last two days. It was very easy to work in, but most importantly, it looks fantastic. You've got tempered glass on the left hand right hand sides, left and right hand sides and the thing that's quite cool about it is that the left hand side is quite dark but it's still transparent and you can see all your lovely components shining through and if you have something like an RGB motherboard or just RGB anything inside it creates a really nice balance between being able to see cool effects and hiding the cable management mess that you've probably got going inside your PC. But then the right hand side of the case has a matching side panel or at least so it seems because it's actually opaque but from the outside it looks the same as the left hand side which means that you can hide all your cable management mess while still having a case that's symmetrical and looks fantastic. Moving inside the system we'll start with the motherboard and this is MSI's brand new Z270 M7. This is one of their higher end boards and this features pretty much every feature you would want from the KB Lake platform, including three M.2 slots. So if you wanna put a load of NVMe drives in here, you can do just that. It's got RGB lighting as well, so you can customize everything the way you want to. And it should be a very good board for overclocking as well, if that is your thing. I will be doing a full review of this board as well. And as soon as that's available, you can find that in the top right hand corner of this video. Moving over to the chip, it is of course the new i7 KB Lake processor, the i7-7700K. And this chip is a very good overclocker, I've managed to overclock it to 5.1 GHz on a different board. And you can find the full review of, well the full build guide video and overclocking video in the top right hand corner as well, that will show you just how to do that. But pretty much if you want the best price performance for a high performance chip, I know it's not the best price performance chip, but we've got to remember that for editing you do need a lot of horsepower. So this is probably going to be the best choice for a lot of people, unless they really do need something really high end, in which case you need to look at something on the X99 platform, as we've already mentioned, or AMD's upcoming Ryzen platform should have something that should hopefully compete. Now, to cool this, and if you do want to overclock this, you're definitely gonna need something good, but we've got something very special. It's the brand new cooler from NZXT. It's the Kraken X62. And this features a 280 millimeter radiator. It overclocks systems very, very well because you can actually keep the temperature of your chip under control, as long as you don't go too stupid, of course. But one of the other cool features about this is it's by far the best looking water cooler I've ever, ever seen. You can create some really cool effects. It's got like a mirror on the front of it and genuinely it looks fantastic and it's a great centerpiece for any system and it adds a lot more value to your water cooler than just simply cooling your CPU. In terms of RAM, this features 16 gigabytes of the latest Crucial Ballistics Elite. It's 3000 megahertz and it's super fast RAM. 16 gigabytes is pretty much the minimum you're gonna need for a serious workhorse PC but you can upgrade this later to 32 gigabytes by adding another two sticks. In terms of the graphics cards, for an editing PC, you do want something substantial, but there's no point spending a stupid amount of money because you're better off spending that somewhere else. But of course, it does entirely depend on the application you are using, as some will take advantage of the graphics card more than others. And for balance, I've put in an MSI GTX 1050 Ti. And this is gonna be great if you wanna play some games as well. But more importantly for things like video editing, as long as your video editor supports it, it should speed up your render times. But again, it will depend entirely on the application uh, that you are going to be using. Storage, we're using one single NVMe drive, so no SATA drives here at all. It's a 500 gigabyte, it's a Samsung 960, and this is part of their Evo line, which means that again, it's price performance when it comes to NVMe, 
It's not the cheapest drive by any stretch of the imagination, but it is cheaper than the 960 Pro and does offer similar levels of performance, but performance that quite can't quite match the 960 Pro. This is gonna be more suited really to those that want to either add additional storage if you wanna play games, but if you want to do some serious rendering and you wanna offload those files, you're gonna need more storage than 500 gigabytes. And I'd probably recommend actually getting a NAS and then backing everything up separately and then you know your data is safe and then you can render on a super fast SSD for your workloads. To get this system powered, you are gonna need something decent, but you probably won't need that much in the way of wattage. The one we've got here is a Cooler Master V750. This is a little bit overkill, but it will give you some upgradability later down the line. And it runs very, very quietly as well. It's very efficient and it's fully modular, so you can create a nice, tidy build as well with leftover cables that you can insert later should you wish to upgrade anything. The very, the very last piece of the puzzle is a copy of Windows. It's Windows 10 Anniversary Edition and I installed this using a USB drive. But if you haven't done this already, go and stick that on a USB drive and then get that ready so that when you have completed your system, you can get installing Windows very, very quickly. So that's all of the parts that went into this system and this is how to put it all together. And so there you have it, the KB Lake editing system. I hope you agree, it's a beautiful, beautiful looking system. Its performance is fantastic and I'll show you some benchmarks in a second, but just the way it looks is so incredible. Once you got this thing combined with the RGB lighting from the motherboard with the NZXT X62 water cooler, it looks fantastic and genuinely I'm amazed how good this thing looks through that case as well. The dark tint on the panel really does look fantastic. I'm not entirely happy the fact that the motherboard does have a red and green light that you can't turn off. This does ruin the aesthetic ever so slightly but I am being a little bit picky. In terms of performance though, um, I do have some figures to hand and I will read them off this bit of paper because I want to make sure I get them right. Cinebench uh, is a great way to compare your CPU performance essentially and this features a Cinebench score of 992 and of course you can increase this by overclocking and once again you can find the overclocking video in the top right hand corner. In terms of some real world um, benchmarks though, the boot time of this PC was 18 seconds. I did cut away when I entered my password because that shouldn't actually count. Um, but it shows just how quick this system can be. In terms of rendering, I used my two minute 4K test file and rendering this in DaVinci Resolve uh, actually took just over two minutes. It was two minutes and four seconds. 
so slightly slower than real time but again shows you the promise of what this system can do in terms of gaming benchmarks though we have 1440p and 1080p benchmarks it's pretty much a 1080p card really but you can get away with 1440p in some titles GTA 5 and um, 1440p we got 64 frames a second on average 1080p was 96 all of the settings were high apart from the textures which were cranked all the way up because textures are more reliant on VRAM than anything else. Hitman 1440p was 33 frames a second average and then 1080p was 47. Once again this is all running on high. Titanfall was 47 frames a second average at 1440p and then 65 at 1080p and I should clarify that was Titanfall 2. So now that you've seen all of the benchmarks there's pretty much only the wrap up left to do. Once again, a massive thank you to everyone for shipping the parts for this build. It's really appreciated, so that's MSI, Crucial, Cooler Master, Overclockers UK who were a massive help in getting the case and the lighting strips to me. I believe that if you do buy the case through Overclockers UK you do get the RGB lighting strips included as well, which is definitely something to note. I'll leave all the links to all of the parts down in the description as um, below as usual if you do want to go and check them out. And of course a massive thank you to you guys for checking out this video. Let me know what you've thought of it, hit the like button if you liked it, share it with your friends if you think they will appreciate it, and do subscribe for more videos just like this. So there we go, a massive thank you once again, and I'll see you in the next video.